I looks like that's everything. I got my little apple right here. I got my papers. I'm a class. Well, no class. Quit time. Let's go. Well, up? Nobody's gonna show up to class. There's no reason for me to teach. And if I can't teach, I can't help. Oh. Oh. Hi. Hi. Who are you? I'm uh, I'm uh, Jeffrey. I'm late to class. You want to play? All right, go. Let's go. Go. Don't play around. Go. Yeah. All right. So today we will be first getting a dog out of the room. Come on, no dogs in the go, classroom. Go, go. go. Hey, come on, puppy dog. You're cute and all, but you gotta go. Go, go. Shut the door now. All right. So anyway, as I was saying before, since somebody actually did show up to class, I guess I have to teach now. So today we are talking about my papers. Shoot my papers. All right. So today, ooh, that's a good one. Today, we will be talking about the Civil Rights Movement, actually, and the massive effort it took to end segregation, because segregation is one of the worst plagues that has ever affected this nation, so today we will be talking about the revolution to end it. So, I mean, why did segregation and all that take so long to end if it was so despised? I mean... Well, um, I guess I don't really need papers for this one. Um, we had to end it because there is absolutely no good reason for you to not give someone a drink or not give someone basic human rights just because of their color. Well, I mean, most people thought they thought like people of different races, like the black people, were aliens. Like they didn't think they were humans. So yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong, actually. Um, that's. Yeah, I hate to say it, but you're really not that far off, so, wow. So, how did it all happen? How did, like, the whole movement begin? Well, there were several things leading up to it, really, like, um, I think one of the biggest ones, especially one of the most famous, is Rosa Parks, when she didn't give up her seat to a white man, um, but I think the, really the fuel to the flame was the king, who led the march on Washington, and especially the Greensboro Four, just a whole list of people who started it. You mean King as in Martin Luther King Jr.? Dang, yeah, that, guy, that guy's pretty cool. I saw his name on like a road sign once, and that thing was like, really long. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. You've probably seen him on road signs dozens of times, because that's just how big and famous he is, but he, he is more than just a sign. Wasn't he like, killed for what he did? Like, there was a lot of people that did not like him at all. Well, yeah, um, he was actually killed for what he did, and because of his color, obviously, but if anything, killing him helped the movement really start, because it really made the opposing side look bad, and people, the whole nation started realizing what they were doing, and how stupid and wrong it was, and it just spread like a wildfire. Yeah, definitely people are starting to like them because he was using Gandhi's, uh, Gandhi's, like, ideas and laws of, like, peaceful protest and things like that, like civil disobedience. It was very, very unviolent. Yes, yes, that's right. He was very nonviolent, which is why he was so successful, but he was way, like, at the end of it, let's start, let's push it back a little bit and start talking about what happened at the beginning of it. Everyone has heard the famous story. Rosa Parks sat at the very front of the colored section, and when the white section filled up, the bus driver, J. Fred Blake, asked the colored people to move to the very, very back to make more room for the whites. Everyone moved, but her. When she refused to give up her seat to the white man, she was arrested and thrown in jail. Wait, so she was in the colored section, and... She didn't move for a guy, even though guys are supposed to move for girls, because it's gentlemanly, but like, like... <sighs> that wasn't even the worst of it. In 1943, she paid her fees at the front of the bus, then exited to the back to enter the color section like he was supposed to. But while she was walking back there, the same driver, Jay Blake, drove off. So she paid her fees, and because of segregation laws, she couldn't walk in the bus like normal people do. So she had to go to the back of the bus. And while she was doing that, he just drove away after she paid her fees. Yes, and that's why the Montgomery bus boycott of 1955 began. The Women's Political Council, WPC, began to pass out flyers calling for a boycott of the bus system on December 5th, 1955. People started refusing to use the buses or any kind of public transportation for that matter. And the same day, black leaders from the area met from the Montgomery Improvement Association, MIA. They elected the king, who is the, at the time the pastor of Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Imagine going to a church with the king as the pastor. Yeah, that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? 
Anyway, the group decided to continue the boycott until the city met their demands. Their demands were courtesy, the hiring of black drivers, and a first come first serve policy. No more segregation on the buses. The blacks made up 75% of the population, which is why this was so effective. That must have made them change their mind, right? Unfortunately, no. But when it happened, it did inspire other kinds of peaceful protests, such as the Greensboro Four and the March on Washington, and finally the passing of the Civil Rights Act in 1964. Greensboro Four sounds like a bluegrass group. <laughs> Who were they? Well, they weren't a bluegrass group. There were four college students from Greensboro, North Carolina that protested against the racist laws by sitting at a white-only counter. They bought something at the regular register, then took what they bought and sat down to order lunch at the, at the famous counter. The lady working there told them that they would have to leave because they didn't serve black. That didn't stop them from sitting at the counter, peacefully protesting the Jim Crow laws. While they sat there, they experienced a level of harassment nobody should ever have to face. Especially for doing the right thing. So they were just, they just sat there while people were shouting at them and throwing stuff at them and just dumping coffee and milkshakes on their heads, screaming Whoa, 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 okay, well, I mean, yeah, they did, but despite all the hate rate they received, they remained calm. This movement started with the four men, but they were able to bring more and more people to the sentence every day. By February 6th, just a few days after, over 1,400 people were involved. This movement became so big that it spread to other cities and then other states. It went up to like millions of people, didn't it? Yeah, across the country, yeah, there were millions and millions of people. There were at least 200,000 people on the March on Washington alone. I haven't even mentioned the most famous of them all, the King's I Have a Dream speech. What did it like? What would it have sounded like to be there? Well, I mean, I could tell you and I could give you quotes, or I could let the King explain it himself. Sit back and watch this. One day, down in Alabama, with its vicious racists, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made low the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together this is our hope this is a faith that I go back to the south with with this faith we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope with this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day, this will be the day when all of God's children be able to sing with new meaning, my country tears of thee. Sweet land of liberty of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. And so let freedom ring. From the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire, let freedom ring. From the mighty mountains of New York, let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the crevaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring, and when this happens, and when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, 
we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. No wonder the speech is like so famous. Yeah. So so I know how the the power how powerful the movement was. I mean, obviously it worked because today we're here today. How exactly was segregation made illegal? Well, that would be the Great Civil Rights Act of 1964. Fun fact about the act: it didn't just make racism illegal; it also made sexism illegal. That meant you cannot turn down a woman for hiring just because she was a woman. Oh. I thought that meant, like, you could pretend to be whatever gender you wanted to be. Ha <laughs> ha, no. That, no. So, I mean, yeah, that, that looks like it's it. Any other questions? Not really, except how much long... This is Mr. Keister, signing off and saying thanks for colliding with us. Oh, there's a dog here. There's a dog. They had the dog. So, really long. <laughs> really long.